Hello, everybody, and welcome back to When Reality Hits with Jackson Brittany. Hey, everybody. All right. This week, we have an amazing guest who is a fan favorite in Bachelor Nation, the amazing bartender from Bachelor in Paradise, Wells Adams. Thank Hello. You Hello. Hello. Thanks for being here today. I heard this is episode number 50, which this, I appreciate. Yes, you are on the 50th episode. We just found out ourselves. Yeah. 50th episode. Like, that is insane. That is crazy. I'll only come back if it's 100, 150. <laughs> That's it. I got it. You're, I, like you know our what? marker. You're our marker. Centennial, <laughs> bicentennial. That's all I'm going to do. You're right. our marker. I it's love in it. my writer. He only does <laughs> landmark shows. <laughs> I love it. And you're also doing a show on our premiere day for the Valley. I know. So this is a big day all well, around. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I, I wonder, like, you walked in. You're like, how come you don't have from shows? Because yeah. we love you. We want you. I know. But like, I wonder you will think like, is Wells going to be on this show? <laughs> like, why, why is he? Hey, on? you and Sarah live in the Valley. Yeah, so I know. Can we persuade you, you to be on next season? <laughs> you actually live closer than some of the people on the show. I know. <laughs> to be honest. Do people know that you have a golf cart? That you Pe- guy around some, a golf cart? some people do. They'll weigh me. They'll st- I mean, the ones that see me out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. don't want to like out you or whatever. No, but, I, like, I love it. I, I'm going to put my bar logo on my yeah, new one. Yeah, it's going to have a logo and everything. To. But I like w- drive. We live so close to one another. That I drive around town and I see Jax in his <laughs> freaking golf cart. And I, the first time I saw you, you flagged me down, and I thought someone was just like saying like, "Hey," because I have like a cool old car. Uh-huh. I thought, th- just thought someone was saying like, "Hey, nice car." And then I see it's. It's Jax, and I'm like, I've got a lot of questions. Number one, I don't think this is street legal, what you're doing right now. It is. It <laughs> and is. And, and you're, like, you're like, I have a license plate back well, here. You should, no, you, that's, that's the first thing that people do when they stop me. Is that street legal? I go, yeah. well, yes, there's plates on it. Here's the registration. Nobody knows, but golf carts are street yeah. legal. But people are just like. Well, you have to make sure it goes above 30 miles per hour, right? Yeah, well, yeah. It's not just your standard golf yeah, cart. Got it's, got a, yeah. it's got the lifts. It's got the seatbelts. It's yeah, got yeah. the turning signals, the horns. It's got to go through the DMV certification before you get your sticker <laughs> and people are like can i get one of these and you know how much it cost me to insure that thing for one year three hundred dollars for the entire year oh that's good hundred dollars yeah. i didn't know it was that cheap yeah isn't that crazy and i tell you what i, I only put around the valley right yeah. that's all i need to go so it's perfect for that it's well the, the dream for sarah and i is to eventually retire in a community where everyone gets around via golf cart. oh that's yeah the dream <laughs> and then like the next level is like I don't know. I don't even know how this is legal, uh, but sometimes there's like a Cadillac golf cart. You're yeah, like, is Cadillac <laughs> making these, or is there like a kit that you're getting? So, or you know who's really big into those in Orlando? Yeah, in Orlando at the golf courses there. I do a lot of golf charges out there, and everybody's got these souped up yeah. caddy type, uh, or make them into Lamborghinis or yeah. Porsches or whatever. And people spend some coin yeah. on making these things. They're cut like stereo systems, TVs, and I'm like, man, it makes mine look like. Nothing, but you go out there. But that's Florida. That's okay. Florida. Well, I love Florida, for you man. guys to geek out over golf carts. <laughs> <Yeah>. but... <laughs> well, I was just saying that we live so close, and I see I this guy yeah. driving around his freaking golf cart. That's how close we are. Yeah, we literally—he's right in the middle between Jax's and our house. I know, yeah. and I appreciate because you guys have came to Jax's a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's so close to our house that we can walk there. Oh, jealous. and then get drunk and then walk home. Oh, yeah, mm, that's awesome. Nice. Even better. Yeah. It would t- probably take us like twenty minutes to walk. That's yeah. too far. <laughs> it's a nine-minute golf truck golf cart ride. That's yeah. not bad. <laughs> Yeah. Not bad. Okay, so we are a reality podcast. So <laughs> I would love to. Uh, you started off. I know you did radio in yeah. Nashville, and then you started off on the yeah. Bachelorette yeah. JoJo's season. Mm-hmm. How did that get started for you? The whole Bachelor beginning. Yeah. So I was a radio host in Nashville. Like I, I had my first radio show when I was sixteen. I went to school. Dang to become it, sixteen! A, yeah. Wow. wow. Um, it wasn't very good. Ninety one point nine KSBB Radio Stevenson. Uh, and then I went to school to be a radio host and I did radio in college and then I graduated I moved to Nashville and I, you kind of have to work your way up in the radio world. So I started Mm -hmm. it like as like a a board up and then I did like overnights and then eventually I got like the night show and then like people got fired or died or quit. And eventually I moved from, from like every day part that you could have to get to the morning show, which is like what everyone wants. Right. And so uh, I had a really popular morning show in Nashville uh, on a really cool indie radio station called Lightning 100, which is still, you can still listen to it today. Uh, great station. And then like iHeart was like, this asshole is taking way too many of our listeners. So we're going to come and steal you. 
Oh, well, good. So, oh, right. <laughs> so then I went to iHeart. I worked like three different. I did like mornings on an alt station. I did afternoon drive on classic rock, and I did nights on CHR, which is like pop. So I was just like doing a lot of radio. I just like lived in a I studio. was going to say, Again, I did Ryan. Nashville. Oh, in Nashville. 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 Okay. I was going to say, I did Ryan Seacrest this morning, and yeah. it was at 745 in the morning. Yeah. So you were always just like really early. I just lived. Well, so my my schedule usually was, it was tough. I would wake up around four. Uh, I See, would, that's so early. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I could never do it now. Like, na- like it, yeah. it aged me so much. But when I was like uh, in my 20s, like I could do it, and I had this passion for it. It was also the only thing I was qualified to do. Uh, so I, but so before that though, like when I was the overnight board op and stuff, I was like waiting tables and bartending, and I was making ends meet and burning it bright, bright on both ends. Um, but my schedule was: is I would wake up at four, I'd get the studio around four thirty, I'd prep my show. Like I didn't have producers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I was my own producer, I was my own tech. I'd prep my show, I'd build it out, I'd start it at six. I would be live until 9.30. I'd voice track the last half hour. I'd go take a nap on my couch. And then I would have like music meetings because I was like a program assistant program director and a, and a music director. Uh, and I'd have music meetings. And then I, w- then I would go back in the studio. I'd prep for my afternoon drive show. Dang. And I would just wow. do that until 7. And then I would go to a different studio, which was the CH- CHR studio, the pop station, like, like Seacrest. I would do that show. Then I would leave, I'd have to host like beer bands and bingo and like cornhole tournaments. Like yeah. I did all that. And, and like, at you bars were hustling. And stuff. Oh yeah. And then, and ESPN, then I, the Ocho kind of stuff. Yes. And, then, and then I would have to go to um, like whatever venue was having the band, whatever band that we were promoting. I'd have to like bring them on and be like, KG Elephant, let's hear it for them. And then they'd come in. And, and Is then, that your radio voice? It, no, my, <laughs> this was my radio voice. But when people say, like, do the thing, yeah. I'll do like, that is Zubland Blah, the new sound of Rebel Radio. <laughs> That's what I, I think so people, hear it. What people want it. to hear. Yeah. So then that, that night would end at like one, and then I would go to bed. And I wake up at four. Oh I'd no! I mean, you I'm, have to I'm have a tired passion. just from yeah. hearing all that. It work. was like I could, I could never do it again. But anyway, so how this all came about was I used to do a bit on my morning show where I would go on auditions for things, uh, and I'd purposefully kind of fail because uh, the bit wasn't me like getting the meow mix commercial or like me getting the chinet paper plate commercial. It was me going over lines for the audition and then being so bad uh, and being like inconsolable the next day when I didn't get the Meow Mix commercial because I forgot the lines of like, Oh, and you would like recap it on. Yeah. So I'd like, like, yeah, I would listen to that with my co-host that they'd be like, okay, what are the lines? This is what we're going to do. I'm going to come in there. This is what I'm going to be wearing. And and we'd like kind of paint the picture. And this was kind of before YouTube and I'd video the whole thing and put it on Facebook and Facebook. And I would, I would definitely, I would fail for the bit. Like I thought it was so funny that I would never book anything. Right. And that was your kind of your shtick on the show. That's why it was just like one in. segment we would your, do. One of your segments, yeah. one of your most popular segments. It was, I don't even know if it was that popular because I didn't get a whole lot of opportunities to do it. I yeah. did probably 10 of them. Right. But uh, one, one of them turned out to be uh, like my brother who lives in LA. He is like the life of the party. And he got approached by a casting director uh, at um, Q's over in Brentwood. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, yeah, I think you guys film there every once in a while. I know the Hills did. one of the did. first bars that I've ever used to go to when yeah. I moved here at Q's. Yeah, I love that place. Uh, great, great bar, by oh, the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, shout out to Q's. Um, so he got approached by a casting director, and he like, went through the process, but then like ended up finding, it's a long kind of process, and he found his now wife, and so he was like, guys, I'm not going to go on the show. i got a girlfriend. Um, so then, like, Fast forward 10 years, he, my brother hears about this bit I'm doing. He's like, do you want to, uh, I'm still friends with the casting director for some reason. Do you want to like, uh, go on an audition for the bachelor? Oh, and cool. I, I was oh. like, this will be so great for the show. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm going to go in there, be like too douchey for, and I, we went over like what I'm going to wear and like how, what I'm going to say and everything. And I was like, I'm gonna be too douchey for this. It'll be so funny when they're like, you can't come on the show. Uh, needless to say, I was like the per- I was the right amount of douche. Like, yeah, take a, did say, you take a page like out? Did you take a page out of the Jax Taylor book of douchiness? I don't. I don't know. I haven't read that chapter. Is it a good one? It's a terrible one. <laughs> 
when reality hits is fueled by factor if you're a busy parent like us making healthy delicious meals with minimal prep can be very tough luckily factor has all your bases covered these are fresh never frozen meals they are chef crafted dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes i hope you like options because factor has over 35 to choose from every week including calorie smart protein plus and keto Plus, there are more than 60 add-ons. You want recommendations this week? Check out the loaded mashed potatoes, shredded chicken with mushroom gravy, smoked cheddar, bacon and Parmesan broccoli. It'll really hit the spot. Now, that's kind of my go-to. That's my favorite. And I've been eating these a lot lately because I've been on my own. But, hey, the proof is in the pudding. (laughs) I was going to say, your wife ain't there to cook for you no more. Let's say That's funny. (laughs) Love pancakes and smoothies? Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast and midday bites. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. FYI, Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash realityhits50 and use code realityhits50 to get 50% off. That's code realityhits50 at factormeals.com slash reality50 to get 50% off. That's absolutely amazing, guys. When Reality Hits is brought to you by Quince. It's time to upgrade your wardrobe. Go grab some luxury essentials at unbeatable prices with Quince. They're here to transform the way you shop with a range of high quality items priced within reach. Now, I've been using Quince for a long time. I use them. I love to use them at the gym. They're my favorite. But now I've been using them when I go out, especially when I'm hitting the bars and, well, even just going out with crews. I wear the Performance Flow Knits or the Cotton Tees. I literally wear them everywhere, not just to the gym, but I wear them to the zoo. I wear them to the park with crews. I'm literally obsessed with these shirts. And get this, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to you. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. Guys, they are so comfortable. I literally live in these shirts. I even go to bed in them. Indulge in affordable luxury. Go to Quince.com slash JB for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash JB to get free shipping and 365 day returns quince.com slash jb ladies i'm telling you get your men some quince shirts no it was funny like so they hit me up and like i like i said i was doing all these shows so i had a very small window of when i could go on the audition and like you guys know this is a very like hollywood thing to say but i said i told them i said hey listen i got a radio show i have to do so I have a window, so I, I need to be the first one in, and I have a hard out at 11. <laughs> I have a hard out. I, I, straight up, I was like, I don't care for shit about this, but I do need to be back. <laughs> I like the fact show. that you, you said hard them, out. Yeah, oh, yeah. You told the casting out. people that? Yeah, I was like, I have a hard out. And they're like, <laughs> oh, I know they were like, who the f- does this guy think he is? <laughs> Number one. So I remember getting there. It was at a hotel in, um, in like downtown Nashville. And I get there, and I was wearing like, it was during my uh, like hipster era, which it still kind of exists. But um, I was like in all denim, like a like a slouchy beanie, you know. Like I had a lot of, I still had like I had a lot of uh, like pins and stuff on my jacket. Flair, a lot of flair. <laughs> I had the fourteen pieces of flair that I needed. Um, and I remember walking in, and all the other guys that were going for the audition were there, and they're all in suits because in their mind they're like i want to wear what what i'm going to wear when i get out of the limo Mm -hmm. and i was like wow we are starting off good boys (laughs) (laughs) i'm not even in the right like outfit right now (laughs) so i went up to the the audition thing and these two women were filming us on like a camcorder and uh they were like so so you're a radio host and i was like yeah and they said okay we'll do like exactly what you just did, like do your radio voice, like do a radio bit. And I had just done this, what I thought was a really funny bit on this show. And so I did it for them and they were dying laughing. And then like 45 minutes expire. And they're like, I was like, I got to go guys. I have a heart out. <laughs> and they're like, so what are you doing in uh, like March and April and into May? And I'm like, my job, you know, and they're like, you might want to block that out. So that's how I got on the show. Did they th- tell you immediately? Like they told you that day or they, was it like they're going to reach more out? More or less, it sounds like. Yeah. I remember th- when they asked me, like, what are you doing during this time? Mm-hmm. And I was, like, says, okay. I was like, did I get this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is crazy because it changed your whole life, I'm sure. For sure. But I still, so I had been in like a long relationship with this, with this one girl and like just didn't work. And, uh, 
and I got like she dumped me and I remember like I was able to do the mental gymnastics of like maybe this works like who knows yeah. you know but if not like what I'm have so many good radio stories yeah, for you for yeah, sure you know? it's a win win yeah. so wait was, yeah. uh, on your season had people started wearing like crazy outfits whenever they got out of the car yet yeah it's funny so I played rugby with a guy in college who dressed up like Santa <laughs> and his name is Nick and so I get there. I had a cool bit. My bit was I, I, I got out of the limo and I go uh, I, like, hey, Jojo, I'm Wells or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm a radio host. And like, I found that like the, the best way to tell someone how you feel is through the, like the majesty of song. And she's like, what? Okay. And I was like, I brought some friends with me. And so out of the limo was um, the guys for all for one. Who sang and I swear? Oh my God. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm like holding my ear, like uh, and I swear. And I remember looking at JoJo, who at the time was I was 31 when I went on the show. She was 25, I think. And I remember looking at her, going, "He has no fucking clue who this band is. I got like, <laughs> no clue." Uh, so those Did guys know. She was like, oh, I love this song. Okay, good. Because I had to be like, I love that song. I was song. like, and for America, it's yeah. all for one. Yeah. Um, and so, and they followed me around that night and they would just sing every time I was like, <laughs> That's awesome. it was, it was actually a, like a really funny bit. Like yeah. I remember doing an interview, uh, like a stand up interview and they're like in the background singing. I'm like, guys, <laughs> cut it. Like I got to do this. Th I love it. So anyway, so this, so this guy gets out of the limo as dressed up as Santa Claus and uh, I think the producers really liked me. Like I was a good storyteller. Mm. Um, I, I think they all had like a lot of faith in, in how well I was going to do. And so I see Santa Claus and I am like, oh, this guy, I, I'm so, I know this guy. And he's like, kind of gives me like a Santa Claus wink and everything. <laughs> Santa and Claus wink. And all of a sudden I run up to him, I grab his thing and I pull it down and I'm like, it's Nick! we have this huge hug. And so immediately producers grab us and they're like, hold on a second. So they sit me down and they're like, are you just like a big fan of Christmas? Like, wh why are you so excited to see Santa Claus? And I was like, I know that guy. I played rugby with him in college. And they were like, no way. How do we miss this? And the was, world is so small. Yeah, it is. What so, did, I, I, my question, when you saw her for the first time, because this was your first time seeing yeah. her, correct? Did you like have an initial react like were you attracted to her did you think well this is just, just gorgeous i, yeah, I know hot. that but yeah. you know, i know she's beautiful yeah. I, i'm not taking that away but when you <laughs> saw her first off were you like all right this will work it like, was it was interesting my season was was uh unique in the fact that we didn't know who it was going to be right um and so we they kind of sequestered you into a hotel beforehand mm -hmm. and all the kind of um gossip magazines and you know the reddit of the time was saying it was going to be sort of kayla quinn and so uh, we all just assumed we were going to go meet right. Kayla. And I remember producers actually came in. They filmed us on their phones because they had a, a Good Morning America or like a late night thing where they announced that it wasn't Kayla, that it was JoJo. And like they tried to get our reactions. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And uh, so that so it, they were both beautiful. And, and also mm -hmm. I, I'm into brunettes uh, <laughs> as my wife. So I was like, yeah, it doesn't matter. They're both brunettes. We're good. Yeah. Um, but I did uh, what I, I said. I said I said something to the effect of like, "You are way out of my league." And then I walked up and I said, "Hey, I'm Wells." Whatever. Um, it's so cute. That is all a the good story. all the intros I just love. Yeah, I love it. it. Do you think like I know there has been a lot of successful relationships out of The Bachelor? Do you think people really fall in love that fast, or do you think it's more like the competition makes you feel like you have feelings faster than you really do. Yeah, I, I think it does work. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I think that it's it's much more realistic when it happens on my show on, on Bachelor yeah, Paradise. Yeah, which I want to talk about. Too. Yeah, um, <laughs> but I can understand how people uh, can, can get there. I didn't get there personally um, on the season mm -hmm. with JoJo. But you they take away your phone. Uh, you can't watch TV. You can't really listen to music. Like I brought a book and they were like super pumped about that. So like uh, you, you really have nothing to distract you other than like think about this person. And then all you're doing is really basically doing therapy. You're sitting down talking with the producer about your feelings every single day. Mm -hmm. It's like. I, I, uh, I trust me. Yeah, <laughs> you guys get it. Oh man, whether you want to or not, you're yeah, like, you need face, to know your feelings. Yeah, What's yeah. your face feelings? Everything. You're like, I don't really want to talk about my yeah, feelings right now. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I I get why. Like, I remember it, it, it deeply affected me. Like, and how I uh, thought about relationships afterwards. Mm -hmm. 
um, how I like went about relationships afterwards. It was actually really good for me to, that was very much like every guy, like walls up, like tough guy. And then you do this, like basically this like boot camp of like therapy. relationship therapy. therapy. And afterwards yeah. I was like, so in tune with like how I felt about things. Um, so I can understand how people got that. That makes, got that, that makes a lot of sense. I've yeah. never looked at it that way. And yeah. when you can really only think about one thing it, yeah. and, and talk about one thing, you can actually like really expedite the process. For Paradise, um, I think it's so, so very believable. Well, now you're on the other side of it a little bit. There's yeah. no pressure. You get to be yourself. You don't have to worry about anything. You're on there. You're the bartender. You get to get to everyone's vibe. I mean, I yeah. feel like you have the best job. Really, you've got the best job. Well, we're, we're good friends with Hannah and Dylan, yeah. you know, through Lori and everybody. I've met so many Bachelor people through Lori, our, and our publicist. Yeah, Pilot Rachel's, you yeah. know, um, and Blake Moynes. We like have spent a lot of time with them. But Hannah and Dylan are married, and, know. you know, that was all Bachelor in Paradise. And I helped that. You did? I take a lot of credit for that. Tell me how you take the credit. I want to hear. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm a kind of a trash bartender but i am a good like i hear that you're yeah. like, you're like a therapist on the yeah, show i'm really more of a therapist yeah. than yeah. i am a bartender um and i'm like a safe place maybe to you go. should th- do therapy for me and jack yeah yeah you <laughs> or just, just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, just jack i'm the one with all the scaffolding <laughs> yeah. as bill burr says i got scaffolding all over me <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah oh, go ahead i'm goodness. sorry well no so um hannah hannah is uh like drop dead gorgeous oh, like yeah. and so She's like barbie and, yeah everyone was going after her and I took a liking to Dylan. He's a sweet guy, smart kid, and he had he had to go through it to like get the prize that was Hannah. Because she had like two guys, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, everyone was okay. After her. Okay. Um, but yeah, she had she was in like a a love triangle, love and triangle. I, so I had to do a lot of like co- coaching him through it. And there were times when he was spiraling out and like about to make bad decisions, and. Normally, if someone's making a bad decision and I don't like them, then I will allow. I won't say anything because <laughs> television. What made him Stirring like? What, what made him win? Like, mm-hmm. what made him better than the other two? Did you help? You said you said you helped him out. What did you give him? Like the edge, or how did he give the edge? He I started guess? freaking out, and he was like, "I'm, you know, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a lot of like, um, I'm going to go tell her how I feel, or like I'm going to go confront this other guy about her." And I remember being like, "You need to chill out, right? <laughs> you know, like." First of all, it's a little thirsty looking. Like that's not what we need. Um, like if you, I think you need to just be the cool guy, mm-hmm. sit by the bar, put out the vibe. I'll make you drinks. We'll chill and like slow play this because um, that's what happens a lot. Like you start to freak out. They go on dates. You're like they're gonna they're gonna leave me and all that stuff. And I remember being like, I think that Hannah. I think that she's one of those people that has has been sought after for so much of her life. Uh-huh. That she doesn't want the guy who's like freaking out, you know. Right. She wants the cool guy. The so I remember that like piece of advice and just being like, "Hey man, just chill." Yeah, yeah that's yeah. good advice yeah. because it, that can be like a lot. It is. It can yeah. be. It happens to me a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it did. It did. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're so sorry. I was after. always more after the girl who wasn't playing the game, not the ones that were so you know into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I just think like if I can have any job on that show, I think you win, won the jackpot of being kind of like the therapist. Yes, you're yeah. the bartender, but you're more or less the therapist. You give them your two cents and what they should and shouldn't do, and I think that's awesome. Do you make mojitos? Jacks won't meddle on. I don't muddle mu- drinks. I, I won't muddle shit. No, I'm not, I don't no. muddle anything. That's yeah. kind of was on my. You guys, I'm a better bartender than both of y'all, and you guys are I mean, more I famous can. for being bartenders than I ever was. <laughs> this episode of When Reality Hits is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, Booking.com offers so many possibilities across the U.S. for all the travelers you want to be, from relaxing beach resorts to remote mountain cabins. The multitude of choices across the U.S. on Booking.com allow you to book whoever you want to be. I'm definitely a different version of me depending on where I'm traveling and who I'm with. We are excited about booking some ski trips and some trips to the beach. I love Florida and I love using Booking.com. Helps me with all my traveling needs. Everything is there and ready for you to go. Hawaii, here I come. Oh, I cannot wait. I've got so many trips to plan and Booking.com is awesome and it is so easy to use. This spring, check out Booking.com for your ideal hotel or vacation home no matter where you go in the U.S. Book whoever you want to be on Booking.com. Booking.yeah. 
Addy. Ladies, did you know that one of the most common complaints from women about their sexual health is a frustratingly low libido? Our sex drives can decline, but it's also treatable. Addy or Flabanserin is FDA approved and has been clinically proven to increase sexual desire in certain premenopausal women who are bothered by low libido. So, if you feel like you've lost your desire and you want to get it back, stop falling for the snake oils. Ask your doctor about Addy today or go to Addy.com. That's A-D-D-Y-I dot com. Addy is for premenopausal women with acquired generalized hypoactive sexual desire disorder, HSDD, who have not had problems with low sexual desire in the past, who have low sexual desire no matter the type of sexual activity, the situation, or the sexual partner. The low sexual desire is troubling to them and is not due to a medical or mental health problem, problems in the relationship, or medicine or other drug use. Addy is not for use in men or to enhance sexual performance. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is increased if you drink one to two standard alcoholic drinks close in time to your Addy dose. Wait at least two hours after drinking before taking Addy at bedtime. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is also increased if you take certain prescriptions, over-the-counter or herbal medications, or have liver problems. Low blood pressure and fainting can happen when you take Addy even if you don't drink alcohol or take other medicines. Do not take if you are allergic to any of the ingredients in Addy. Allergic reactions may include hives, itching or trouble breathing. Sleepiness, sometimes serious, can occur. Common side effects include dizziness, nausea, tiredness, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, and dry mouth. See full PI and medication guide, including box warning at addy.com forward slash PI or call 844-PINK-PILL. Ask your doctor about Addy today or go to addy.com. That's A-D-D-Y-I dot com. Do you think now, and how many seasons ago was uh, was when you were on The Bachelor? How many seasons? Was that a long time ago? Season yeah. 12, right? Season yeah, 12. season 12. So how many years ago was that? Well, so so the, uh, our, we just wrapped our eighth season of, of so uh, ninth season of Paradise. This was my seventh season as the bartender. So it was like eight years ago. Okay, so do you think now um, that people are going on The Bachelor for alternative reasons? influencing yeah they're not they're not going there for love anymore let's i mean can we be honest well, i think that was always the so you think it was like that way too. since the beginning like okay hey I, I may not find love but you know what i'll i'll get something else out of this a social kind of media career is like it's big, yeah, but bucks, it's, it's big bucks but it's not what it used to be though it's very interesting like these kids are not getting the same amount of following that like they used to the bachelor yeah, people in the beginning would get all. 100k right off the bat like so i got in right kind of right before social media popped like the mm-hmm. season before no one uh from like caitlin bristow season no one had social media right it wasn't a thing and then mine was like the first one and i remember i had a i had thirteen thousand followers i remember that before i went on the show because i was a radio host in right. nashville and that was a ton of followers yeah, yeah. i had four thousand i thought i had a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i remember and jordan rogers who worked at espn or he worked like on he worked in radio but he worked on the football side of of stuff or sports side he had eight thousand, and i remember i was like well i have the most followers of anyone here or whatnot and no one really gave a shit about that and then it was like the next year the next year it was like kept growing uh-huh. and, and people were getting a million followers two million followers when mm-hmm. they would go on the show and then it became very much like this side quest that you could go do but now it's interesting because yes i think that for sure uh, I think people go on the show for our ult- ulterior motives, mm-hmm. right? Or, or they're like, well, if it doesn't work out, at least this happens. I mean, I feel like that's with every show nowadays. Yeah. Though, like yeah. some people might actually fall in love while they're there, but like Love Is Blind, for instance, they get a lot of followers. Love Island, they get a lot of followers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I honestly think, yeah, I, and I'm. You can tell me to your blue in the face that's not true, but yes, I do believe <laughs> that's the main reason why they go on. And if they meet somebody great, but they're going in for being an influencer. I think. I think it's more. I don't even know if it's the influence 
influencer thing. Because now I'm like, like we had we had a bachelor, like a couple bachelorettes in a row, like didn't get over like eight hundred thousand followers. Mm-hmm. Which right. like that was cra- that used to be like if you're just the bachelor or the bachelorette, you're the like well one. over a million. Yeah. Does that know? mean you think the show is kind of tearing off? I I think that uh, we reached like. Um, a critical mass like there's only so many bachelor people you could follow mm-hmm. if you know for in your in social if you're a social media user right um it's it's, it's hard to uptick again like these these uh i know that the this maria girl got a lot of followers and then this other daisy girl got a lot of followers so i think maybe we're we're getting back there but i do think it kind of took a big dip and now how it's many uh, back up how many girls uh, selling tummy tees. Oh, I know. At one, t- <laughs> at one time. Yeah. But I'm sure that's... That's fun, guys. Yeah. That's fun. I, I did that's hey, fun for a long we time. We did it all, too. I, I did it. Yeah. And I remember being like, I'm a guy. There was a... There, <laughs> there was I'm a, a guy. Why am I doing this? There was a time... Maybe when, it's a scarf, guys. <laughs> th- there was a time when the Fat Fit Fun, the three of the tummy tees, was really popular. And I remember the company, 310, they hired, they bought, uh, rented a house, and they would just cycle out people. There was people from The Bachelor, from yeah. our show, from all these shows, just coming in, doing a shake, leave. Sh- oh, yeah. Another company do a shake. So they were just banking on all these Bachelor, Vanderpump people, whatever it was, and they were just kind of going through. So it was kind of interesting to see. Yeah. But yeah, everyone, yeah, like you said, uh, how many times are you going to watch the same person say, hey, come and try tummy tea? Yeah. <laughs> but I do, I think, I think. Everybody um, shit their pants. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> di- diarrhea tummy tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's a little bit of. I think people want their 15 minutes. Okay? Yeah, of course. And I think, and I, I totally get that too. Like, it's a very interesting experience to go through. Mm. Um, I, I always have like this big powwow with cast before we start filming uh, Paradise. Cause that show is a comedy. It opens as a comedy. Like, yes, there's love and you're going on journeys and you know, it's dramatic, but like for the most part, like this is a funny show. Um, and I'll be like, Hey, listen, like there's a good chance. Like you're you're probably not going to get invited back to this thing. Like right. this is going to be the so one and done. Yeah. It's not like Vanderpump where like you have seasons and stuff like mm-hmm. this is kind of it. And, and I'll always kind of impress upon them to be like, make really fun TV. Yeah. Like don't be crazy and don't do things you wouldn't normally do. But remember like this might be the last time you do it. And it's more of that. Like, I think that you'll get the most out of it. If you think of it that in terms of like, this is my 15 minutes probably ending right here. Well, that's probably that's why Bachelor of Paradise is so great because it does bring some of the people back. Yeah, for sure. Like, because yeah. they probably came across some really cool contestants and they were like, man, I love to bring these people back. How can we do that? Here's an idea. Yeah. Let's throw them all on an island. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely our all star yeah. team. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. It's Which people is cool. who are really good at it. Yeah. Um, it's a great idea. No, it is. <laughs> and it it's is. really fun. Like, I want to see Johnny Bananas on it. I think you do. Good well, he's that. not you, a bachelor you, person. Okay, so do you. <laughs> I, 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 I think I can spill this because I went on his and. Uh, he told this secret. He wasn't supposed to. But, oh, gosh, but what? But he put it out. <laughs> so Johnny and I have known each other for a while. I went on uh, Worst Cooks in, Amer- in America with, uh, with him, and I went against him in the finals, and I beat him. So <laughs> the greatest challenged uh, guy in any uh, whatever uh, got beaten by me in a, in a competition show. <laughs> um, and I love that I have that over Johnny. Yes. Bennett. But um, so we became friends, and we wanted to get him on the show. Mm-hmm. And he went to go do the challenge. And, you know, in the challenge, they take away your phone and all this stuff. So we were, like, waiting for the call. And we were hoping that, like, he was going to get voted out early and have to come home. And then we were going to bring him in. We had this whole idea of how we were going to do it. because Oh, you're going to bring him on to Bachelor in Paradise? Yeah. Oh, wow. And, I, and it was going to be, I mean, maybe we can still do it. I, I don't, I think that ship sailed a little bit. But, like, it was going to be a thing of, hey, listen, this is my friend. I vouch for him. Yeah, uh, like he deserves to find love as much as <laughs> he the doesn't rest want of you. love. He just loves being a bachelor well, playboy. He's good at it. He's just so good at making reality TV. Yes, yeah. I sh- I filmed House of Villains I with know. him, and we became really really good friends. And I love the guy to death. He's uh, we both been in each other's podcasts. Uh, comes to my bar, we've been hanging out. Like that was the one positive thing that I got out of being on that show. Yeah. I, I really him and I just hit it off right off the bat. It was, you know, there's all kinds of different people, but him and I just very similar sports, drinking, yeah. you know, working out, <laughs> girls, cars, like that's just what we like. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we just hit it off really good, but he's such a cool guy. Really cool guy. Uh, I see, just from you talking, I can just totally tell like, this is like something that I feel like you like to be behind the camera rather than in front. Oh, for sure. Like, uh. Be- like going back to my like, race. I can see you working for The Bachelor. I can see you like <laughs> they're hiring you as a head producer, or like cause you're yeah. so good at it. And well, going, that's why he's the therapist yeah, bartender. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this, you're not done there. Regardless if The Bachelor Paradise ever ends, I feel like 
They're going to keep you around it for something It will never nice. end. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, please no. I'll be 84 years old doing this f***ing show. <laughs> Bartending. And, and now they've got the old people bachelor and bachelorette, right? Yeah, like the, golden... the old people. And I was like, I pitched it too. I was like, okay, we got to do Golden Bachelor in Paradise. And like everyone needs to roll up in a golf cart. <laughs> it needs to happen in Palm Springs or like in like Del Florida. Boca Vista. Boca yeah. Vista. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and like, Naples. Uh, like I, I want like dates to be on shuffleboard courts and I think it'd be so funny if like you don't get a rose and you have to leave and you have to leave in a golf cart yeah, <laughs> and, and I it's feel just like... a GoPro on you and, <laughs> <laughs> and someone's driving you away is like, are you okay? <laughs> there would be, there's a huge generation that would love that. And, oh, and how did it do? They did good. I it think. did really well. Yeah. Yeah. It, it actually was like a huge shot in the arm for ABC and, and for the show. I, and I do think that, um, I think also like a pie in the sky greatness for that would be a crossover paradise where you bring in both uh, young and old people. Yeah. And then see who like go- wants to go coog hunting, you know, right. <laughs> or, or, or uh, you know, single parents. People would about, like, yeah. you know, something like that. <laughs> I mean, are you not, trying to not, get, no. are you, what, are you, what are you doing here, Jack? I knew she was going to go there as I, as I said that, but Damn. I'm like, I'm thinking of other things like, you know, or widowers or something He's like, literally yeah. like single parents. And then you, <laughs> yeah, you could, I could see in your eyes. No. They like lit up. Like no, a I, no, You're like, did I really just no, say that? That is one, that is one, uh. One, no, I don't want to go on. There's show. a show called There's a show called Milf Manor. Have you heard of that? Yes, yes, yes. that is hilarious. And the name is awesome. Wait, I'm, should we get in? I really want to. I really want to hear he, about this pizza. Okay, Jax wants to talk okay. about. I want yeah, to yeah. hear best about. In dough. Okay, we're gonna do a little transition here. Yeah. We're gonna talk about best in dough. Yeah. Explain that. How did that happen? You and I have the same manager, so I kind of got a little gist of what it was about, but not everything. How did you? So, are you? Do you love pizza? <laughs> no, but so I like. I like cooking. Right. Um. I mean, like, I went on Worst Cooks in America. I was going to go on that show. I was filming something else at the time, remember? I, I'm, I oh, you, should, you should still go. Like, it's it's a really fun show to do. I mean, yeah. he doesn't know how to make anything. No, <laughs> that, that's, that's the bit. No, yeah. the, no, the whole thing was, Brittany was on vacation, and I didn't know what to do, and I was talking about going to get Domino's Pizza, and I was something like that, and then they saw that, and they pitched, called Ryan. We would love to have him, yeah. but it didn't work out. But anyway, go ahead. Um, so <laughs> I don't want to take away from you. No, no, yeah. I already did it. So you can do it out. Okay. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, like, I, I like to, I like to eat, like to cook. Um, that was a funny thing of like I did worse cooks, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not a bad cook. Yeah, and they're like, don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, fine. So and now that, we know why you beat Johnny. Well, and so at the, at the end, I don't really care anymore. I, I'll ruin it for everybody. But like at the end, I win, and I and we, so Johnny and I go out and get drinks, and I was like, Johnny, I feel really bad. Like I'm like not, I'm not a great cook, but I'm not a bad cook. Right. And he's like, I'm Italian from like upstate new york like i'm also a very good cook and i was like oh oh okay so y'all cheated <laughs> good gameplay buddy <laughs> uh, y'all cheated <laughs> yeah so the way that the best in dough came about was it was just a straight up an audition and it was funny too because i was in africa uh with my brother for his 50th birthday and they wanted to do a chemistry read and that's like for people that don't know it's like you get into a room with like whoever you're acting with or whoever you're making the show with, and you see if like you have got chemistry together. Mm. And uh, the, with the time change, it was like midnight there, and I was in like a hut in the middle of nowhere, uh, looking at like lions and tigers and bears. And um, and I they were like, hey, can you can you have them order you a pizza so you can try the pizza and talk with everyone and they were like, you are in the bush. So they made me some weird like warthog flatbread thing that was like not fire at all. <laughs> and I was having to do this chemistry read with the this guy, Daniele Aditi, who is the owner of Pizzana in L.A. If you've ever been there, it's so good. And he was going to be like the main judge and I was going to be the host. And so it was like us talking about pizza. And anyways, it was, you know, midnight for me and I was eating this warthog pizza and for some reason, like it worked. Like they warthog were... pizza just sounds so gross. Yeah. Sounds so gross, but delicious also at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what is ham? I'm thinking, I'm thinking pig. Yeah, so, it's ham. At the end of the day, maybe it just got a little. <laughs> it was to just, it. it was just very weird. Okay, you know, All right. uh, I, I think I did like make a t- Timon and Puma joke where I was like, "This is not a kuna matata." <laughs> uh, anyway, so the, like it, they liked me. They liked my uh, repertoire with Daniele and like the other judges. And then we went and filmed it, and, like, I will concede that, like, with Bachelor in Paradise, it's, like, the best gig in the world. Like, mm-hmm. I go to Mexico. Mm-hmm. I go to a really beautiful place in Mexico. Yeah. I get to stay in a pretty nice place. I go and I I, I film, you know, 10 hours a day. 
uh, watching like a great dumpster fire burn in front of me. Like I'm a, kind of a part of it, but yeah. I'm like no stakes in it. Yeah, right. it's not really your drama. Yeah, yeah. that's I, awesome. And also like I, I can make myself a drink if I want. Yeah. And just be like, oh, I need a martini now. <laughs> um, and it best shooting best in dough was exponentially so much more fun to make than yeah. Paradise. Oh wow. Uh, we shot ten episodes in ten days. Um, every day was a pizza party. Okay. Uh, I did gain a bunch of weight, but you know, anything for the craft. Uh, <laughs> and a- after every, uh, day or two, Daniele would, would be like, I'll make everyone pizza cast crew, everyone. And he was so good at it. Uh, and it was just the most fun experience. I loved like working with him. I love making the show. Uh, it was a bummer. It didn't get picked up for season two, which makes, makes no sense. Cause it was like super cheap to make. Everyone loved it. But it was like coming at a weird time with like I don't know a, a Disney merger and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But anyways, looking back, I, I I absolutely I absolutely loved it, and I would like highly recommend trying to host no, a cooking show. Yeah, no, no, I think it'd like, be awesome. No, not interest in like doing something like like on YouTube with it or something like that. They didn't want to do anything like that. I mean, I guess we could probably do yeah, that. It, it's it, a lot of work, though. It was a weird thing. Like, um, they paid to hold the set for like a year, right? They so, weren't sure. So everyone thought it was going. Yeah. Right? And it was like last. We had the, we had like a pick up meeting at the last second. It didn't go, which is just a bummer. Like it was just like such a joy to make. It also was, I remember when we were like talking about kind of what the show is going to be. I was like, I just really don't want it to be mean spirited because there's so many cooking shows that are like, like Gordon Ramsay's like kind of a dick to everybody. Yeah, you know? yeah. And you're like, yeah. that's his shtick though. Yeah. It's like, scary sometimes. And I was like, I just don't <laughs> want this as a pizza show. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so it was. I mean, like we did give him like constructive criticism, like and when things weren't good, like we spit it out or whatever. But like for the most part, it was just like really, really fun. Yeah. Um, and it looked th- really fun. And, I watched a couple episodes. Yeah, it really good. And like being on set was just like really joyful. Yeah. and everything. That's good, so yeah. Yeah, that I makes really a huge it. difference. So where can people find along. this right now if they want to watch season one? It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu right yeah. now, and it's called Best in Dough, which I love the name of that. By I know. The way. Yeah. Great name. I would love love. Have you seen Nailed It? On Netflix, mm-hmm. I would love oh, to be obsessed with that show. A, a judge or a host of that, like yeah. that, just laughing all day long. I mean, the stuff that people make on there is hilarious. That's yeah. the kind of ones we like. The ones where they kind of just make fun of everybody and they're lighthearted and they have the guest judges and you're kind of like, oh, yeah. The people that don't know what they're doing is the best to watch. So also, <laughs> though, during Christmas time, the ones that are are really good are also really fun to watch. Some of them, like that chocolate maker, we love that one. Oh, guy. that guy's crazy. That oh, guy he is so good. Yeah. He's like, a, the, what a really good looking guy, yeah. and he's in Vegas. <laughs> Guess, and he doesn't make a mess, and he makes these. Easy- <laughs> like, do you notice that? Do you notice there's no mess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just such a weird thing to like I, point out. But I know, it's but true. I'm looking at the whole thing, and like, I just in my head, I'm already. Me- I'm like watching this, and I'm full of chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's just like making this chocolate, and I like, and it's just going together. And I can only imagine what he charges for his his oh, things. Yeah. He must just make bank. I mean, I can't even imagine. Like, it's so, such, and he doesn't that's ever. So funny that he, that's what he picks up on. He doesn't know, ever. He doesn't ever get messy. His hair is perfect all yeah. the time. He's really good looking. He looks like perfect. a Formula he's One driver. He's always smiling too. He's always smiling. Yeah. He's in Vegas. He's making like he's working with chocolate all day. Like this guy's got got it made. Yeah. What show is that called? Uh. It's something with chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows is what it, we're talking about. What's it, it called? Really Steve? Something with chocolate. Uh, I can't remember. The, I don't know, but it, we, it's only been season one. And I'm like, how is there not a season two of that? Imagine an app designed to make you use it less. Seems counterproductive, no? Well, Apartments.com's instant alert feature works exactly that way. Instead of scanning rental listings a million times a day, simply set and forget your search to whatever you're looking for in a place and let Apartments.com do the rest. From pet-friendly apartments to balconies to in-unit ACs, Apartments.com's powerful search tools let you know when the perfect combination of features you're seeking is listed. So you don't have to power through rental descriptions one by one. With more more rental listings than anywhere else. Apartments.com's instant alerts mean you can spend less time online looking for the perfect place and more time doing you. Apartments.com, the place to find a place. She talks about etiquette. Get your fingers out of your mouth. She talks about where to find a deal. You know, if you sell me something on Instagram, I buy it. Whoever markets to me does a fabulous job. She talks about the economy. We used to joke that'll be the thing to send them to therapy. Okay, we're creating jobs. Can we look at it that way? She talks about parenting. These kids want to come home. They don't want to leave. They don't want to drive. They want to stay in the womb. Let's talk with Heather Dubro every Thursday on Podcast One or wherever you get your podcasts. 
So you've been on Bachelor in Paradise for uh, Judge for seven seasons, you said? Yeah. Uh, it, I think it was our eighth season. We just, we but just you were the bartender for? Eight seasons. Seven or eight seasons. Okay. I don't know. A lot. Okay. A lot. Who would be your, because so many people obviously wrote in questions for yeah. you. Who would be your favorite couple to come from Bachelor in Paradise? Joe and Serena. Uh, that's number one. Oh, yes. I love them, too. I also married them. Oh, so, oh yeah, you did. Yeah. I remember seeing her pictures. Um, I went to Cabo with her. She's like one of the nicest people. She's also like ridiculously beautiful. Oh, like, yeah. Gorgeous. Have you seen her mother? Um, on her photos, I have. I haven't seen her in person, but I've so, seen her on her Instagram. So I get there. I have to marry them. And so I, I meet her mom and I go, wow, um, you look just like Serena. And she goes, no, honey. Serena looks just like me. And I go, no, honey, <laughs> you look like the 25-year-old. Oh. And she was like, damn, you're good. And I, like, yeah. <laughs> I uh, love that. Yeah, they're number one for me. Because you're really close to Joe, too, right? Yeah. So we filmed we filmed two shows together. Mm -hmm. And he we put him through it on two seasons. Uh, but he's just like a, just such a lovable guy and a very real guy. Like He was definitely not someone who like thought about getting Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. Like The first season he went on in Paradise, he didn't. He got kicked off like the first night of being on The Bachelorette. So, like, he didn't know how to, any of it worked. And then he just became so lovable. Um, and he sat at my beer and or sat at my bar. And he is the only person to this day that will sit and drink a beer with me down there. Oh. Because everyone else is so terrified of a carbohydrate. Because, <laughs> they, they, you know, like, <laughs> shirts off. Dude, I, they that all is got, hilarious. They've got abs from tits to taint. So, like, they can't, like, anything, any sugar, anything. So, but Joe will be like, yo, let me get a beer. Because he's so Chicagoan from Chicago. Uh, and so we'll sit there and drink beers together. And I love them. I would say that Dylan Hannah would probably be number two. Um, I don't know. There have been so many. Yeah, there has be been a lot. Yeah. Sorry, real quick. School of Chocolate on Netflix. Uh, <laughs> School of Chocolate. Okay, Go back continue. to your chocolate obsession. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I went to New York Fashion Week with Joe and Serena. Oh, yeah. So I got to spend some time with them. They're a great couple. And you can tell they're both super real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? They're the best. I, Serena's done my podcast and stuff as well. So they were awesome. Are these fire questions? Um, I just have a couple questions from some fans. Okay. This is from AMT10190. Is there a limit to how many drinks he can give the cast? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you guys have a limit when you no. film? No. God, no. That's so great. <laughs> we didn't used to, and then there was a scandal, and then we had to stop. It's, that's usually what happens. If somebody gets in trouble, then yeah. that's when they do the laws or the rules. Well, it's a little silly, uh, and I, I totally understand it, that, um, that like, insurance-wise and, like, just protecting, like, Mickey Mouse. Like, I, I understand it, mm -hmm. but we're... We're in the business of like trying to get these people engaged and then eventually married. And I think it's a huge disservice to not allow people to see everything about someone before they we before they kind of like make them get engaged. We don't make them, but like kind of encourage them to get engaged. And one very very big part of of learning who someone is is how they act when they're fucked up. Oh yeah, you know, like if it's if someone's a sloppy drunk, you're like, Ugh, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure about this. And we and we kind of curtail that. And I don't. I understand, like, in terms of filming something, when someone's just like, ah, 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 and you're like, okay, yeah. you, you're not even, we can't can never put this out. on TV. Yeah, right. I can't get the words out. But <laughs> for, like, the show and w what I want them to do is find love, I think you should you should see that. But anyways, to answer your question, um, it's two, dr it's kind of changed a little bit, but it's two drinks an hour, effectively. Okay. Um, so you, uh, you can have a shot, you can have a mixed drink, you can't have one, you can't have, like, let me get a shot and a beer and take it to, at the same time. Okay. I don't know why. Um, you, you, can't, finish it. you can't order for someone else, which I think is a good rule just for life to keep you from not getting like roofied or something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, because someone could order like this is for so-and-so and then they can drink it. So I understand that. Um, but you can totally get around it. It's I do it by the hour. Right. So like they'll be like, how much time do I have? And I'll be like, you've got seven minutes left until you can order another drink. <laughs> so what they'll do is they'll wow, be like, so you have to pay attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If somebody's not doing it for you, you have to do it yourself. And it's also so much, uh, like pressure <laughs> to put on me. Yeah. Like what if you're they're not tipping? paying me enough <laughs> to be like the guy who decides who gets to have the drinks and stuff. Uh, <laughs> but I have like this little book and I have to like denote like how many you've had. Uh -huh. But what they'll end up doing is they'll be like, what time is it? Okay, it's 4.56. Okay, let me get a shot. Okay, doom. Okay, let me get a drink. Boom. Okay, 
and then it's 503. Hey, let me get a shot. And you're like, ah, you figured it out, buddy. So you can get around it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love it. Okay, this is from Amanda underscore Meyer. Who was the most demanding or bitchy Bachelor in Paradise contestant? Oh, I won't say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I will say this. Uh, every season, there is someone I hate. <laughs> and you will, you would never know, but it's always like, shit, you, you guys are in the service industry. Uh, it's so very telling, uh, the character of someone by how they treat someone in the uh, service industry. Amen to you know? that. Yes. I cannot, that is one of my biggest pet peeves. What are you talking about looking at me? <laughs> I should have saw this from the beginning with but this But he man. is a bartender. <laughs> How could he be mean? If exactly. He, that, I'm telling you. Wow. I'm he's had mean. his moments that yeah. have been. Mm. I have had my moments. You know, after a few drinks and stuff, sometimes yes. you get a yeah. little crazy. Oh, yes. I, I, nothing like. There's never... nothing more embarrassing to me. Like yeah. I work. I was a service. I think it's because I've been belittled so, so much. So and then long. I think it's because I've been belittled so much. And then, then when I didn't have to do it anymore, I was just like, I would just take it out. That's on awful. Yeah. That's I know. awful. It's an awful way. But it wasn't like right off the bat. It would be like late at night after a few drinks and I'd be pissed off if they like cut me off or something like that. Yeah. Red then flags. I'd be mad. Yeah. But what's... There's a lot of red flags here with me. <laughs> you should yeah. have known that. God. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. Every, every season, someone's like rude to me. I hate that. And, oh. I'll, and I'll be like, you know, I'll, I won't say anything. Uh, but I have so much more power than everyone realizes that I do because I see everything. And right? you've been th- for seven or eight years now. Like, they have to know you got more power. Yeah, but if someone's like root. I, when I get snapped at, yeah. oh no, yeah. And and if I find out someone's like talking, like if, if someone snaps at me, and then like there's an opportunity for me to give them advice that might help them, they are never getting that advice. That's so I want good. you out of here immediately. Yeah, you're I, able to like kind of pick your favorites yeah. that way. Does that yeah. mean that you got to go to Fiji a lot though? I went once. Well, is it not awesome there? It's beautiful. Yeah, but I would say that paradise is. Oh, really? Yeah. Which part of Mexico is it in par- for Paradise? So it's in Sayulita. So you fly into Puerto Vallarta. Oh, we love Puerto Vallarta. And then you drive. Yeah, it's like kind of by Punta Mita. Okay. Um, anyways, it's, it's it's so it's at a real resort, right? So like where they do Love Island, it's just like a house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like where we film, it's a real resort. So like our crafty isn't like random people making food. It's like the resort's food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it is so fire. That's good because yeah. you never know when you go to all inclusive resort if yeah. you're going to have good food or not. Yeah. <laughs> but that was I a love fun that. show to watch, though. We had Marco on. Marco and uh, um, Hannah. Hannah on. They, yeah, after yeah. they won. Yeah, yeah they, we had them on. It seemed cool. like a really cool show, except for the fact that these guys had their shirts off the whole time. And I was <laughs> like, I would, I would have had anxiety the whole time. I would have just been working out, not eating. Like, yeah. Those guys are just walking around, I know. shredded. Yeah, and no one was like, having beers. No one was having beers, <laughs> and they're all drinking out of these steel cups. Yeah. all the time. And see, he picks up on the weirdest things. He was all about the steel cups the like, whole time that he watched Love steel Island. Steel cups, and I feel like other shows were picking up on it too. Yeah. And they were using steel cups. Okay, so as we just mentioned, Wells is married to the beautiful Sarah Highland. This question is from Jordan. My, my, I'm not good at some people's last names. Matiuska, maybe? Yep. What is your, the <laughs> best part of being a husband? Mm, I should probably <sighs> listen to this. Yeah, listen, Jack. Yeah. Listen closely. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we have to have sex anytime we want to have sex. Um, <laughs> write that down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> write that down. Uh, oh, gosh. No, I mean, it's really nice. Uh, it's really nice to have, like, a teammate. And I, this is, I had this question, and it's not, like, the romantic answer, but it is, like, the one that's like i think for me the most real um so like she's always gonna be like team wells for anything that's going on and like vice versa right like we're every we're each other's like biggest cheerleader which is really important especially in the Mm -hmm. industry that we're in where it's like it's a lot of no's and a lot of like am i doing the right thing or like am i cut out for this or like so it's a lot of that and so it's really nice to have someone just like kind of always be in your corner the other thing that's i think is funny um you know, sometimes I'll get a little too drunk, um, and she'll be like, eh, "It's time to, it's time to get out of here. Let's go." <laughs> you know, and then, and vice versa. Sometimes I'm like, "Hey, babe, we gotta go. Uh, <laughs> we're, things are getting a little crazy." And it's really nice to have someone who can like kind of save you from uh, from danger. Yeah, you know, especially in like the world that we're in where people recognize you yes and then all of a sudden you're like oh god what did i say last night yeah exactly i've had those nights too i'm not proud of it but it happens (laughs) yeah i've had a lot of those nights where you're just kind of praying that no one heard and especially with what we do too because people know where to find us yeah 
you know, like we were, we, we, we used to be at Sir all the time. We're at Tom Tom. Now we're at Jax's. So it's like we're always taking pictures. So you got to really watch yeah. what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So that's a good one. Well, actually, this is funny. Who gets stopped for pictures more, you or your wife? Interestingly enough, uh, it'll be me. And it's not because I am a fraction of as famous as my wife. It's because when my wife goes out, she's like, Always in a hat and glasses. And I am, I am very, uh, I, I've had the same haircut since <laughs> like middle school. Like I have the same clothes. Like I, I always look like me. So when they see me, then they're like, that's gotta be him. It's definitely him. And then uh, immediately they'll look for her. They'll look for her. But it's a very interesting thing. Um, so she's an actress. So she plays different people. Exactly. I play myself on TV. Mm-hmm. So uh, people who know me on TV, they think they uh, actually think they know, know me. Yep. That's the, we which, say that all the which time. Which is yeah. which is lovely, but they don't think they know Sarah because right. obviously she's not Haley from Modern Family. She's not like some ditzy, uh, yeah. you know. And so I think that's very interesting. So I, it's this thing of they have a little bit of ownership over you because they know you. Yeah. They they, they don't watch. They watch Wells. Yeah. And, you know, we know exactly what yeah, you yeah. mean. I know exactly what you mean. And sometimes yeah. people will just come up to you and just tell you what they think about your life. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure for you guys all the time. Yeah, it's crazy. My favorite thing, though, and I don't know if this happens to you guys, but it happens to me quite a bit where uh, a, it's usually a guy. He'll come up to me and he goes, hey, I have no idea. Who all the you time. Are. All the time. I, I, but my girlfriend. Times my a day. girlfriend or my, my wife. My, my dog's groomer, sister's aunt's <laughs> yeah. uncle loves you. Yeah. It was love a picture. Be like, yeah. well, how did you know who I was yeah, then? Yeah. Like, yeah. My favorite, oh. my favorite, my favorite, you can use this if you want. It's a great one. When when they say, hey, listen, I have no idea who you are, and I always cut them off, and then I go, I have no idea who you That's are. That's what either. I say. I say that back. I go, I don't know who you are either. So or they'll be with their friend, like, who is this? I'm yeah. like, who are you? <laughs> like, I, I, do, I do the same thing. I do the same thing because it annoys me. I, it, it annoys me when they go, I don't know who you are. Like, you don't have to say that. But you know, so you know why they're doing that, though, yeah, right? I don't know. Why? What's okay, the reason so why they I've, do that? I've thought about this a lot. So what, what, they're, what they're doing is they're coming up to someone and interrupting someone which they know innately is a rude thing to do, and so they feel bad about themselves for doing it. So I think subconsciously what they want to do is they want to bring you down a little bit so they feel a little bit better about what they're doing to you, which mm. is kind of interrupting you. I think it's rude right off the bat. You Sorry, look so much that. prettier in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they say to you? You're a lot bigger. Uh, we've heard, a lot, we, you you yeah. just hear like random things like that. It's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> I mean yeah. Does that mean I'm like busted on TV? I'm like, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, my thing is like, if any, I'm so grateful and glad when people come up to me. Oh, just, for sure. I, I, oh. Want, I want them to. Yeah. yeah. We love yeah. it. But, I, I but love the it. like t- subtle jab of like, I don't know. You're I like, know. fuck, man. I know. I, I was just sitting here eating <laughs> chicken wings, man. I, exactly. I, I, like, I will. Shit. I will never ever turn down um, a picture or whatever just because no, they're either. the ones that, you know, that we have to pay, pay my for bills. Every, this yeah. is how I pay my bills. Like, it's, yeah. again, I'm not an, an actor, so it's, you know, this is our life. This yeah. is what we do. So I, I owe it to them. I owe them everything. You know, every time we go to BravoCon or whatever, I'll stay the extra 10, 20 minutes and 30 minutes to make sure that person gets a picture. Yeah. yeah. It's just the right thing to do. <laughs> oh, you're such a good man. Mm-hmm. And that's the more you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's uh, end this talking a little bit about the valley since yes. we have to. Cause this I have be... so many questions about everything, by the way. <laughs> this is our premiere. We'll, uh, we're recording this on every Tuesday we record. So today <sighs> is actually tonight. It'll come out. But Wells was at our premiere party we had a couple days ago. Yep. So we all got to see the episode already. What do you think so far, Wells? I think it looks awesome. Uh, I also, I find it funny, like the, um, the demo that you're going for, <laughs> because it's, I'm in the same demo of like, you're married and it, like people, uh, all your friends have kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think, uh, there is a huge like kind of gap in that. Cause you have like the housewives who are like, that's what I tell old. people. People ask have... me that all the time. I go, we're not quite Vanderpump. Yeah. We're not quite housewives. We're in that, that middle part where we're kind of, you know, yeah. we don't really know where we stand, but, uh, and we're not like super millionaires. Like yeah, we're not, yeah, we're not yeah, multi, yeah. multi-millionaires. <laughs> so it's kind of like we have our own little niche, you yeah. know, our own little spot. That's what I kind of tell everybody. But the first episode was okay. I thought it was great. Yeah, um, great. But it, here's the thing about first we episodes. we got to introduce everybody. That's the thing about yes. first episodes on new shows. They can tend to be a little bit boring because we're introducing everybody. We're introducing the whole cast and who everybody is. So as soon as we get that out of the way, mm-hmm. then it gets into it. So I just want to make sure. It was still such a cute episode. Oh, it, was it was very so cute. good. It was very cute. It felt good to be back. 
I was just even a, though my mouth was like I was frozen. just annoyed because I already know everybody, and I'm like, let's get into the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, next episode starts the drama, so yeah, right off be the prepared. Bat. But I'm, I'm, we're thankful that you came, even though you had of to course. stand outside for a and, minute. Uh, <laughs> And if we do get season two, I mean, you're right down the street. I so. know. Have your people talk to my people. That's right. And we have the same people. And we have the same people. So. Uh, wait, um, can, I, you... can I ask a question about, yeah. about yeah, yeah, sure. this, uh, Tom Sandoval scandal? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is a genuine question. Um, and so it's, it's Tom and Ariana, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Um, I'm very confused. And maybe you guys can answer this. So I, I understand that, like, he cheated on her. Yes. So I'm sorry. To the all listeners, I don't really know this that well. I just, like, have from the reading of the headlines. But I just want to get things under control. So he cheated on her. And they were together for a really long time. That's what's really messed up. Yeah. Right? right? And they but, have a house together. Yeah. And it wasn't just the cheating. It was an affair. Yeah. Okay. Great. With somebody who was their best friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're on the show or whatever. Yeah. But. Weren't other people on the show cheating with other people on the show? Yes. So, yes, I understand, like, what he did was, like, really bad just of, like, how long they were together. But, like... So has everybody else. Yeah, so I thought that's the kind of thing. Here's and the, and here's now why. she's, like, on Chicago. Yeah. And she's on Dance with the Stars. And it's like, well, hold on. Did everyone else get these perks? No. I, I, did, I, I damn sure did it when Jax lo- cheated on me. I hate him saying yes. that, but you did. You deserve Dancing <laughs> with the Stars, damn it. My Jeeves, this my was before we were married. Trophy. This is before we were married. Um... <laughs> Uh, but you know, you, you make, I can laugh about it now because it's been so many years, but but it's it's weird. It's funny you say that because that is kind of the, um, the underlying thing that everybody talks about. Like, do you have to get like something scorned to be able to do all these, have all these opportunities, not saying she doesn't deserve it. She does. She's really good. She's, she went to school for this and this is what she wants to do. But yeah, it is kind of the running joke because Everybody on the show, maybe one or two, but mostly everybody on the show. I was never involved in a cheating scandal. I will say That's that. Good. Okay, but you know, I'm saying majority of the men, well, the girls yeah. too, were on, on that. So that's kind of the, the running joke. They're like, how is this any different? The difference is that everybody else in the show, there was like, a, okay, you slept with somebody and then it was over. This was an affair yeah, I with someone's friend in the group. Well, and also kind of like what we were talking about earlier, like people feel like they know your lives and they have been a couple on a show for like nine seasons yeah. straight. So people really thought they knew them and like, Whenever they found out that Raquel was cheating with Tom and they were best friends and he, they, she was staying at their house all the time. It was right in front of their face yeah. for like six months before no, they found out. I yeah. get that it's gross. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm it just trying to... It took off, though. No, because it's, it's like, difference. Fa- in yeah. all fairness, everybody should have had those opportunities is what you're basically saying. I mean, Randall like did La La so dirty yeah. and like it, there, was, but there was just a lot of different my, things. My Kristen other... and Tommy, it's it's really incestuous to yeah. be honest. Like You, Stassi, Kristen. <laughs> I mean, there's like a lot. Yeah. But, the, but then my <laughs> other question is is I don't know Tom. I've never met him. Uh, Just stay away. Yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. I don't. I don't really care either way. But like, there's a part of me, the guy who like makes helps make television shows. A part of me is like, is this like Machiavellian? Like, did is this been? Pl- did he plan this? Because this is genius. He made a everyone lot of people, so much money. A lot he made of the show. Himself. I know, but and the show became so much bigger because of him. Yep. And there's a part of me that's like. Is he like a like crazy as a fox here? Like, <laughs> you got to remember, but and then like you know, there was stuff at home that happened that went really bad his, with his family, with his friends. Things it went really, really dark for him for a while, like super, super dark. Yeah, but I think yeah. he's starting to climb his way back up. He is okay. At the end of the day, yes, he did it unfair and cheated. Nobody died though. Yeah. Okay, I think it's. I, mean, I think we went on a year last week of talking about this. It's been a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel like it's. I don't want. To... I don't want to. I just... no, 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 no. You, it's a good question because I had the same. When this all happened, that was my first thing. The selfish person that I am, like, well, where was mine? Yeah. Or where was uh, this? Because <laughs> you were the one being bad. I know, but like, how come I didn't? You know, like it just, Gosh. it just, you know, not just me. I think I'm sure there was a lot of people. I mean, Sheena, Sheena was like butt hurt that she didn't get to go on Dancing with the Stars, and yeah. she wanted to go. And it was just, just the way the. It's just the, again timing. Hey, the way but it was. I feel like the Valley got like. Oh yeah, kickstarted. And, way and by faster. the way, I, I thank you, Tom Sandoval, yeah. because yeah. my show wouldn't have been on today if yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. for that situation. It, like Brittany said, it got kickstarted because of what's going on. And another small world thing bringing in together the three of us is that Jasmine is a cast member on the Valley, and she was on. I think it was Nick Vi. Vi is it Vi? Vi-, 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 Vi- Al- we don't talk about him. Well, on <laughs> she was on. She was on his season. Yeah, and she came to Paradise. Yeah, and came to Paradise yeah, too. Season four. So now she's a cast member on our show. I know. Love Jasmine, yeah. and I love her. Her girlfriend, both love them both. So again, it's kind of a small world. Yeah. How yeah, everything's no wonder connected. things didn't work out with Nick. You know, <laughs> I have so many 
I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I don't. I just do not like that human being at right. all. Oh, I was, I was making more references of, of uh, I love her girlfriend. Oh, yes. She went, she went on a dating show. Yeah, her yeah. girlfriend, Melissa, is awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she is. They're going to be at the bar tonight if you end okay. up popping by. <laughs> Maybe I'll walk over. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Wells. Um, you have two podcasts. Do you want to say? Yeah, look at, what, sure, where can yeah. we find you? Uh, I do one podcast with Brandy Cyrus. I've done it since I was doing radio in Nashville. We used to do like a radio show together back then. Um, and it's called Your Favorite Thing Podcast. And it's just basically like our favorite things of the week. So favorite shows we're watching, favorite mu- music they're listening to, favorite books that we're reading. I like um, that because it's positive. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 that's how that's how it all came about. Her sister, Miley, was like going through a scandal. I was like getting a lot of heat on Twitter and I was like, we were like, what should we, how should we make this show? And I was like, I kind of just want to talk about stuff that's good and positive and that we like and not talk about negative stuff. And she was like, boom, let's do that. So that's how that show um, came about. And it's great. And then I do another show that's uh, it's a cooking show with Tyler Florence from Food Network. And um, it's called Two Dudes in the Kitchen. And basically, we just talk about cooking and we bring on chefs and we answer questions. And uh, he was actually on worst cooks in america he was one of the celebrity deaths and uh he uh what i breathed heavy he into the mic. Oh, i didn't even he hear it nose sorry, breathing sorry. in the mic yeah. Sorry. Continue. so sorry. yeah anyways two dudes in the kitchen go uh watch that and uh yeah there's nine seasons of bachelor in paradise you can go watch him on that and best in dough best in dough yeah yeah, yeah. watch who, that it's really who really knows good. what else is next yeah. yeah maybe i'll be on the valley and your instagram two. at wills adams yes. right yeah. yes okay well thank you so much for coming of course, on thanks our for having 50th me. episode yeah. Woo! And premiere night of the Valley. Everybody tune in every Tuesday. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bravo. We are on at 9 o'clock tonight following Vanderpump yeah, Rules. We're directly uh-huh. after a Vanderpump Rules episode. So. Yeah. Yep, yep. Knock yep. on wood. All right. Enjoy tonight's episode. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a great yes. week. Thanks for listening to When Reality Hits with Jackson Brittany. We'll talk to you later. Bye, y'all.